Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnsey. In this lesson we are going to study perpendicular line segments and the angles that are created within those segments. The information that's given here says that CD is going to be perpendicular to AF. Therefore I can mark those as uh, perpendicular with a little box. Most books will use this symbol to mean perpendicular. On this side we will have a 90 degree angles because that is what perpendicular means that you have a right angle. Right angles all have a measurement of 90 degrees. But also on this side we will have perpendicular we have perpendicular lines and again we are creating a right angle which is 90 degrees. Now let's read the next statement. The second statement says that we have perpendicular BC BC is perpendicular to CE. So the diagram gets a little tricky here to draw, but we actually have three pairs of perpendicular or right angles. Let's look at the one that I marked with the red box. Angles 1 and angle 2 create a right angle. I'll write that with red. Angle 1 plus angle 2 now I really should put the little M uh, to mean measurement. Angle 1 plus angle 2, the measurements of those two angles equals 90 degrees. Because 90 degrees is a right angle and that's what perpendicular lines create is a right angle. Alright, if we look at the green one now. The green little box that I created, uh, we have angle 3 plus angle 4 equal 90 degrees because that is a right angle and again that's because we have perpendicular lines. And the third one that we created uh, or drew the little box to show that we have perpendicular lines that is angle 2 and angle 3. Angle 2 plus angle 3 equal 90 degrees. As you can see, I have added some information here. Uh, the little m represents measurement, so this means that the measure of angle 1 is 7x. Yes, we're going to use a little bit of algebra now. The x represents a variable, a variable that we do not know. The measure of angle 2 will rep be represented by 7x plus 6. That means 7 times the x plus the 6. The measurement of angle 3 is going to be 5x plus 12 and the measurement of angle 4 is 8x. Now you can see I moved the uh, equations around a little bit and I wanted to separate these and we're going to work on these one at a time. Now I've made this problem a bit complicated. All the problems in your book will not involve three different equations. Most problems that you will be asked to do will be only one equation, but I wanted to give you a compl more complicated problem to look at. Uh, it's not really any harder if you just take one step, one equation at a time. Now remember that angle 1 and angle 2 are created by perpendicular lines and therefore they equal 90 degrees. But the information that I just gave said that angle 1 is 7x. So the substitution property of geometry states that we can remove the angle 1 and replace it with what it's equal to. 7x. That's the substitution property of, of geometry. And we also really use it in algebra, we just don't mention it very often. Measure of angle 2 is 7x plus 6, so I'll write 7x plus 6 here instead of the angle 2, and these still equal 90 degrees. So I essentially, a substitution property, property lets you replace things that are equal. I replaced angle 2 with 7x plus 6. I replaced the angle 1 with 7x. Now let's do the algebra. This will be 14x plus 6 equals 90. Subtract 6 from both sides. And that 6 really should have a degree mark on it. That's 14x will be equal to 84. Divide by 14 to solve for x and we will get what? 6. 
So x in this problem is represented by 6. Now this is the same x throughout the problem, so I'm going to go ahead and solve these other two equations, but x will still remain to be 6. <clears throat> angle 3 plus angle 4. Now angle 3 is 5x plus 12. Angle 4 was 8x. So again, I'm using the substitution property. When you replace something with what it's equal to, that's substitution. Now then, we're going to add the like terms. I have a 5x and an 8x, so that will be 13x. That too really is substitution. I replace something with what it's equal to. And then we have plus 12 equal 90. We will subtract 12 from both sides, and we will get 78. If you divide both sides now by 13, you should get 6. Now we can again do this. We are still going to get the 6. Let's find each angle though now. Angle 1 is 7x. So that means angle 1 is 7 times 6 or 42 degrees. The measure of angle 1 is 42. Remember that angle 2 is 7x plus 6. That is 6 degrees. So we will have the 42 again plus 6 which is 48. Now remember angle 1 and angle 2 are supplement are uh, excuse me are <coughs> going to create created now remember that angle 1 and angle 2 were 90 degrees. If you add the 48 and the 42, do you get 90? Sure. These do create a right angle of 90 degrees. All right, angle 3 will be uh, 5x plus 12. Remember that our x is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So 30 plus 12 is 42. So angle 3 is 32. Oh, notice that's the same as angle 1. I wonder if angle 4 is going to be equal to uh, angle 2. Angle 4 is 8x. 8 times 6 is 48. Yes, it is. If you have studied any other theorems, you will know that that's going to happen each time that you create a diagram like this one where you have perpendicular lines and then a perpendicular lines within those, the angles will be uh, equal. Two of those will be equal to each other. Angle 1 and angle 3 were equal, and angle 2 and angle 4 were equal. When you're given a diagram of uh, two segments that are perpendicular to each other, and then you are also given uh, two other segments that are perpendicular to each other that are within that, the segments must all share the same vertex in this diagram. In both diagrams, they did do that. The vertex for all the angles was shared. As we saw in this diagram, angle 1 was congruent to angle 3, and angle 2 was congruent to angle 4. In the diagram that I've just drawn for you, you can see that uh, this angle, if I call it 1, this one 2, and this one 3, 4, then perhaps after studying this first diagram you can see that angle 1 here will be congruent to this angle 3, and then angle 2 will be congruent or equal to the angle 4 that's here. Now this occurs when you have perpendicular lines within other perpendicular lines. Another word that you may have heard used in your geometry class is the word complementary. Two angles in our equations are complements because their sum is 90 degrees. If the sum of two angles is 90 degrees, then the two angles are called complementary or complements. So angle 1 and angle 2 are complements. Angle 3 and angle 4 are called complementary or complements. And angle 2 and angle 3 are complementary or called complements. Any two angles when added together, if they equal 90 degrees, then they are complementary or called complements. 
I hope this information has helped you with your geometry lesson today. This is Susan Johnson with MathInABox.com. If you have questions, please email me. I answer email at least 350 days of the year. Thank you.